What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Okay, so today's a special day. This is a game I got on my eBay account. I have certain search parameters and when they when things meet that parameter, I get notifications. So this is a game that I got notification for a couple times over the past few months, but just recently I snapped on one, a $210 game plus shipping, right? A lot of money, right? This is a game called Secura Flamingo Archives. Um, this is a game that eludes even most Xbox 360 shooter lists that exist on the internet. This is a game that I actually found out about from one of my YouTube subscribers, and I am very glad that you put me down with this game. Um, this game usually sells for right around the $200 mark. That's what I paid for this one. It was $210 to be exact, uh, I think $220 after shipping. And this is a sealed game. I am going to open it. Now, buddy of mine, Dan from uh, Rebel Game Club, he told me, he was like, no, 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 don't open it. He was like, just wait for somebody, to, a buyer to come along. And then, you know, maybe somebody will eventually have a used copy and you can get it cheaper that way. Now, that is possible. I could do that. And um, that does sound like a pretty good plan, but I don't want to wait. I just want to play this game and I'm just going to open it and keep it open in my collection. So what is Secura Flamingo Archives? Pretty much, guys, it's a compilation, a collection of milestone shooters. Um, what is a milestone shooter, you may ask? Um, probably one of their most popular games would be probably Chaos Field that released on, well, the, the GameCube version of that game. Uh, another really popular one that released, that actually released very late, you know, after the console pretty much disappeared for the Dreamcast. That's Radergy from the Dreamcast. So... Sakura Flamingo Archives consist of five milestone shooters. Okay, you got Chaos Field, you got Radergy or Radio Allergy, you got Karos, I guess that's how you pronounce that, Karos, K-A-R-O-U-S, um, Illmatic Envelope, and Radergy Noah. Five awesome milestone games. You know, Chaos Field, not so much. It's still a good game, just not my favorite on this list, but that's that's a whole other topic we can get into about Chaos Field. Um so three of those games we actually got released on the Nintendo Wii. Um, I think it's the Ultimate Shooting Collection. It actually released in Japan as the Milestone Shooting Collection, which is what they should have called the game that released on the 360. So the Milestone Shooting Collection had Chaos Field, Radergy, and Kadros. And then they had another one. They had a Milestone Shooting Collection too, only in Japan. We didn't get this one. And that consisted of the same five games that we have on Sakura Flamingo Archives, but... The reason that you're paying that money, the reason you're going to want Secure Flamingo Archives, there's different modes. The revision mode is the mode that gives you access to the five milestone games. Then you have a death mode. Death mode is just pretty much like a boss rush timed. Uh, it's kind of hard to explain. There's like a box in the middle of the screen and it blows up. I don't know if it blows up when you take a certain amount of hits or the box blows up when a certain amount of time goes by or you don't score a certain score. I don't know. I don't know all the mechanics there, but it's just not too terribly fun. What you're paying for, guys, is that mixture mode. Okay, so what is the mixture mode? The mixture mode gives you access to all the shooters from all five of the milestone games. At least I'm, I'm pretty sure it's all five of the games. And each ship maintains the same mechanics, the same gameplay mechanics that it would in its own respective game. What does that mean? That means you have five, I think it's five, pretty sure it's five, original levels or however many original levels that it is, and then access to play every one of those levels with... A ship of your choice from all the milestone games and they all have their same mechanics a chaos field ship's not going to play the same as a car ship a car ship's not going to play the same as a radergy or a radergy noah ship so you see what i mean they all have their own unique gameplay mechanics and they maintain those throughout the game which gives the game a ton of replayability for each respective ship so i think that's pretty cool the levels are awesome you're looking at gameplay footage of the mixture mode right now i'm not going to this is actually a live stream I did the other day. I'm not going to go back and pull, you know, because you guys, I'm sure a lot of you guys know the Milestone Shooters. But that Milestone Shooter uh, 2, Compilation 2 or whatever that came out in Japan, I looked that up. The price on that thing's pretty cheap. Um, you do need a Japanese Wii to play it, but I got a few Japanese Wii games. When I find them cheap at the flea market and it's something cool, um, I, you know, I get it. And eventually I'm going to need a Japanese Wii. And I'm going to wait for a cheap one to come across you know, my lap. But it's probably not going to be right now with the way the prices of Wii's going and the virus. But um, I do want to get a Japanese Wii. If any of you guys have one or anyone in Japan, I'm sure they're cheap over there. You know, let me know. I'll let you know what I can trade for it or whatever. But on the Japanese Wii, while we're on the subject... There was shooter releases that we didn't get over here, and a lot of the milestone games had their own separate releases on the Wii, and then they had the you know the the two games you know the milestone shooting collection one and two. Um, 
I know that Radergy had its own Wii release, I think, or it might have been Radergy Noah. Uh, one of them had its own uh, release. Uh, Illmatic Envelope actually had its own separate. I'm pretty sure, you know, don't, you know, let me know in the comment section if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure Illmatic Envelope had its own Wii release. These games are very rare on the Wii. And the funny thing is, is the prices on them are pretty cheap when I look up, because I think nobody knows about them, or the only people that want them are probably Americans that don't have, or, you know, people that, not just Americans, but people that don't have a Japanese Wii. So. I want to get a Japanese Wii. There's some pretty cool games to be had for that system, but most of them can be had if you buy the Milestone Shooting Collection 2 on the Wii. You know, so why not just get and get that and knock out all the Wii shooters, you know, other than the ones that we got over here in the US, but you know, so anyway, this is an awesome game. It sucks that it costs what it costs. Like I said, I paid 200 for this. You know, set your your eBay search parameters up to to $200 and for this game and you know, when you have the extra money, you know, just get it. I actually made 125, 26, something like that money off of ad revenue deposited into my account. So in my mind, this game only cost me $100. And I've been working a ton of overtime, but work's kind of slowed down here over the past couple weeks. So I'm going to watch my spending now, but this was a major purchase for me. Um, it's not every day that I get to open up a game that costs $200. And as a matter of fact, I think this game is the most expensive brand new game that I have I've ever bought and opened. <laughs> of course, I got a YouTube channel. Of course, I'm going to videotape myself opening it. Um, yeah, it, you know, if you guys have a JTAG or a, not a JTAG, an RGH, I would recommend, and I'm going to get an RGH, RGH, you know, a reset uh, glitched uh, hack. Xbox 360. I really want one of those. So if any of you guys have any information, I know you can buy them on eBay, but there's a lot of stuff you guys got to know about RGH as to not, you know, mess it up where it's, you know, like pretty much a paperweight. But I want to get one so I can get a lot of those delisted games. Trouble Witches was delisted on the 360. I really want to play that. That Scott Pilgrim beat em up game that I keep hearing about. I like beat em up, so I'd like to try that out. Not really big on the subject matter there, but you know, mainly Trouble Witches. I'm sure there's some pretty awesome games that got delisted. But anyway, that's enough about the 360, enough about the Wii. To talk about this game, to get back on track here, Secura Flamingo Archives does offer two-player local co-op for mixture mode and death mode. Any other five games that are on their revision mode that you guys are probably familiar with, they're all single-player games, and they're single-player games on this game. But that mixture mode, having two-player local co-op, and I tested this out. I didn't have anyone to play with, but I hooked two controllers up and I wanted to see that it works and it does work. So, you know, YouTube channels like Gaming Off The Grid, you guys could play this game two player locally. I think that would be awesome. Get a JTAG, that way you guys can do it. Um, and anybody, again, just to, just to reiterate right here, I really want to get a JTAG. So if any of you guys know what I'm talking about, please holler at me in the comment section. That way I could work a deal with somebody or buy one from an authorized source or a reliable source, you know, somebody that actually knows what they're doing. Uh, anyway, guys, I really recommend this game. I like it. That mixture mode is on point. All five of the Milestone games play great on here. As a matter of fact, I'd go as far as to say this is the version of the Milestone game that you're going to want. You know, you're not going to want to play this on the GameCube. You're not going to want to play this on the on the Wii. You do want to play it on the 360, and I, I love that. I love the D-pad on the 360 controller. A lot of people don't, but I can rock out with the 360 D-pad, let me tell you. I like it. I'm pretty sure there'd be some cool 360 uh, other controllers, like third-party controllers, that are probably pretty good, that have even better D-pads. That'd be something to look into. Hell, it might even be something to make a YouTube video about. Anyways, guys, holler at you next time. Or, tell next time. Peace out.